Look around you. Look around you. Just look around you. Have you worked out what we're looking for? Correct. The answer is water. This program, Water, is discussed in Chapter 1 of your textbook, which accompanies this series. Please ensure that you have your copybook at hand, as you'll be asked to take down notes from the screen at various points throughout the program. Water. Delicious, refreshing water. From ocean to sea to lake to pool to pond to puddle to drop to drip. Water, chemical symbol H20, is all around us. It's the giver of life. And it's there with us from our first cup of tea in the morning to our nightly bithyuvi. I say... But what is water? It's a difficult question because water is impossible to describe. One might ask the same about birds. What are birds? We just don't know. But we do know that water is the most powerful substance on Earth. And whatever form it's in, be it ice, vapour, or just water, it has the capacity to affect whatever it comes into contact with. Ruined. Experiment 1. An experiment was carried out to demonstrate the effects of boiling water upon proteins. A quantity of water is heated over a Bunsen until it reaches its boiling point of 1000 degrees. Now we take our sample of protein. For the purposes of this experiment, we're using an egg. Next, the egg is placed carefully into the beaker. Let's see what happens to the egg after it's been in the boiling water for one minute. The scientist removes the egg and examines its interior consistency. From the state of the albumen, we can see that the protein has hardly reacted to the intense heat of the water. Let's try another egg, this time for two minutes. Make sure you look out for the release of the new albumen. It's out now. The protein is beginning to react. We try a further egg, this time for three minutes. Now let's take a look inside the third egg. The heat of the water has caused the molecular structure of the glutinous protein to coagulate. In other words, not too runny, not too hard, a perfect eggy. Salt is added to taste and breakfast is served. Le petit déjeuner est prêt. Write that down in your copybook now. When rain freezes, it becomes snow. Snow's main use, of course, is for entertainment. Here's a modern snowman. Batteries have been used for the eyes, an aerial for the nose, and a calculator for the mouth. Hello. 
Hello. But it's not just man that uses frozen water. These ants have been trained to design and build an igloo using tiny blocks of ice. Once the igloo is complete, the ants take a well-deserved rest. We'll come back to the ants later. In the meantime, thanks ants. Thanks. Experiment 2. An experiment was carried out to determine the effects of nitrogen gas upon water. First, a sample of water was taken. Next, a Jane Grey's pipe is fitted to the nozzle of a canister of nitrogen. The Jane Grey is placed in the beaker of water. We're using about ten pence worth of gas. Now we turn on the canister to release nitrogen. The gas mefipulates gently through the Jane Grey and into the water, causing bubbling. The mefipulation is allowed to continue for five minutes. When the time is up, we turn off the gas and free the Jane Grey from the beaker. Now let's take a look at our water sample. If you look carefully, you'll notice that the water has changed colour from invisible to brown. What we have produced is imbenzalmine nitrotamine more commonly known as whiskey. Whiskey is a pleasant tasting, thirst quenching drink and it's enjoyed by all. Now let's rejoin the ants and see how they're settling into their igloo. A change has taken place. The igloo appears to have melted. Perhaps the scientists forgot to turn off a Bunsen. Water, water, what hast thou danced? Bless you, ants. Blants. Now hand in your copybook to your teacher or head of class. In the next program, we will look at romance.